Hello friends, you're here with me, Jen the Taxidermy Witch, and we are talking about aloe in, you know, herbal alchemy, in herbalism, and in witchcraft, okay? Well, we went to the international market the other day, and I found gigantic aloe leaves. That, of, as you can see, is almost as big as the top of the doorway. It cost me 98 cents. And to me, that is an amazing steal. I use aloe as a conditioner for my dreads. Uh, it's, it's fantastic. It doesn't leave a residue in your hair. It doesn't stick around. It doesn't really have a smell. It is an edible plant. There's a lot of medicinal benefits to it. Uh, but we'll have to possibly go over that maybe in a different video. This is just a little snippet video on a working I've done here and a little bit about the properties. So what is this and why is this giant aloe leaf hung above my door? When we talk about intuitive magic, which means, you know, your intuition, if you didn't know any of the magical properties, how would you use it as magic? That's how I or how would you use it in magic? That's how I always like to start before I actually read the information. Because what it means to you actually applies as a witchcraft ingredient. So let's just look at it really closely. <clears throat> and we can see here that there are spikes all along both sides. Uh, they are quite sharp. It is a cactus or a type of cactus. And I'm just going to read from you a little bit out of Scott Cunningham's book here, Encyclopedia of Magical Herbs, and what it says. <clears throat> so it says, aloe, aloe vera. And uh, it's not, I was going to say its biblical name is, no, its uh, plant name is the letter A, a period, and then S-P-P, P as in potato. Fresh, dried, oh, there's a bunch of different uh, little scientific initials here. I don't know what they mean. I'm sorry. I will show them to you, though. Okay, now let's read the folk names. It can be known as a burn plant, and that's easy because aloe vera is one of the things everybody knows. What is it good for? Sunburns. Okay. Uh, it's also known as the medicine plant, the sakal, S-A-Q-A-L, and the zabila, S-A-B-I-L-A. -A. The gender, you want to guess? It's feminine, and I'm just going to guess that that would be because it has chastity aspects with the spike there. Uh, that those chastity aspects make it feminine. Uh, planet the moon. Element water. And most fruits, especially aloe, are just packed full of water. So if you're trying to memorize what the element is, usually all fruits are watery foods. You can give a guess. It's probably water. Um, <clears throat> powers. Protection and luck. Let me just kind of show you where I've got this. Right up here is my frog money altar, and then down below start all my herbs, okay, and my books and whatnot, but this is my front door to my bedroom, to the studio where we film it. Uh, so let's, let's read the magical uses, because the powers, now these, since aloe is edible, these powers are different than we're going to find in the red book that we talk through often of Scott Cunningham's witchcraft, uh, excuse me, Wicca in the kitchen. <clears throat> so the edible qualities are going to be different than the medicinal, uh, excuse me, different than the magical qualities of when you ingest it, when you eat it, is different than the magical qualities of what we're doing here because we're not eating it, okay? So the qualities of a working. Mm. Powers, protection, and luck for a working. Magical uses. The aloe, a popular house plant, is also protective. It guards against evil influences and prevents household accidents. That's funny because I dropped the aloe plant the other day in the video. <laughs> uh, okay. In Africa, the aloe is hung over houses and doors to drive away evil. 
hung over houses, like the over the whole house. <clears throat> I don't know. To drive away evil as well as to bring us luck. Now, I do spirit work in this room, so I always need to keep my evil wards up so that no evil spirits can come into this room. And I will be getting another owl leaf and putting this in the same exact fashion over my window to my bedroom over here. So I'll be putting one right up there. All right. Now, we'll go on with the chlorophyll, shall we? <laughs> go on with the chlorophyll. Uh, in Mexico, large wreaths made of whole garlic bulbs strung on wire. I have garlic in the dehydrator and I didn't know why. Strung on wire and festooned. Festooned. Tess, you're the word guru. What does festooned mean? F-E-S-T-O-O-N-E-D. It is festooned with pictures of saints, packets of magical herbs, lodestones, rock salt, pine nuts, as well as clumps of freshly cut aloe. Now let me tell you this, this is crazy. I f bought this piece of aloe the same day that I was foraging pine cones, which have pine nuts in them. Very interesting. Um, so the wreaths were made of garlic bulbs strung with wire and festooned with pictures of saints, packets, and magical herbs, lodestones, rock salt, pine nuts, as well as clumps as of freshly cut aloe. These are hung up in the home for protection, luck, money, and so on. <clears throat> so I've, what I've done up here is I've, I nailed a nail there and I nailed a nail there. And I thought that I was going to need that nail, but I didn't, so I just strung the rest of the leather. Now, I'm the taxidermy witch, so I have to add in some sort of taxidermy to this. And to me, I chose to use a black leather cord, okay? And I also used knot magic when I tied it in up around that aloe. I tied in <coughs> the uh, like a corresponding magical number. I used the number 9 and the number 3. The number three is special to me, and it's also a very magical number. So we've got that there. And then uh, as we go along, those little, what I called like chastity spines of its feminine nature, I've twisted that. Because I didn't know how I was going to do it, I tried to just put nails in and then hang the aloe above, and that obviously didn't work. It just wanted to fall right down. I don't know why I thought that that would work. So that's why I have the, um, where are my fingers? The two original nails here. Uh, but then I thought, okay, well, I'll tie four and I'll just tie it together. Well, I didn't need that nail. Anyway, you can always use nails for something. We'll fill the holes before we go. So I've got that big piece of black leather that I use for lots of different things in my working. So you can use the spirit of the animal just in a piece of leather cord, you guys. Please don't forget that. Uh, respect the animal, bring it to you, ask to call upon it to help you. When you're holding the leather, hold the ball before you tie it up and say, I, you know, call to your spirit guides. Spirit guides, be with me in calling the spirit of this animal, this cow, or wherever the leather came from, this uh, animal to be with me in the, in the working that we're doing to banish evil from this room and bring luck into our lives. Now, that is as simple as that. It's a simple working. I did think that this was going to be more of a snippet video, but it's turned into more of a, an extended working and herbal video. Um, but herbal alchemy is so gorgeous, you guys, and it takes nothing. It really takes nothing but a couple of nails, 98 cents, and some really brilliant imagination. So Thank you for joining me, Jen the Taxidermy Witch, while we looked at my lovely, lovely door working of aloe <clears throat> above the doorway to bring in luck and to keep out evil. All right? All right, we'll see you guys back. Jen the Taxidermy Witch, have a beautiful day and grab some aloe.